Stogie Farts here. We're going to do something a little bit differently on this channel from now until whenever I decide not to do it. Usually what I used to do was I'd sit here, I'd film a video offline, edit it, when I'm done I would upload it. Now what I think I'm going to try and do, we'll see how it works out, is I'm actually going to film my videos live. That means I'm going to sit down, I'm going to turn on the camera, I'm going to do my video, I'm going to talk about whatever I'm normally going to talk about, and whether it be answering questions or showing you off things, whatever I'm doing, and uh, we're going to do it live. And then when I'm done talking, I'll go ahead and I'll look and I'll see, because you know when I'm live, you can send me stuff in real time, send me messages. So I'll uh, go through some messages, interact with you guys. I think it'll be a little bit better because we can interact that way. And, uh, and then when I'm done, I'll see if I can edit the video down and make it more, you know, more concise for people that are watching it after the fact. So uh, let me just make sure, yep, it's live right now. And uh, okay, one second, right now, so what, just to let you guys know, uh, I'm not going to really answer the questions yet, but if you have questions, just pull up the chat and start asking away or talk amongst yourselves. Uh, I'm smoking my, uh, this is a pipe that I got from Paul Menard. It's a reverse calabash pipe. And uh, inside I'm smoking some autumn evening. It's an aromatic, but it actually is... Uh, a little powerful so you got to be careful when you smoke it or else it could uh, kick your ass right now I'm gonna start off actually with a question that came into me someone emailed me at askstokiefarts at gmail.com guy named Matt Weirs from Jacksonville Florida and he actually has a couple questions he, the first one was a two-parter and he said uh, why smoke a pipe like why do I smoke a pipe what what makes me smoke a pipe versus, you know, something else? And, you know, it's funny that a lot of people, uh, you know, to me, it's I've been doing it for so long now that it's just second nature, but it's still funny how a lot of people aren't used to seeing a pipe. I started with uh, uh, pipe smoking with pipe smoking. I started smoking cigars first. Okay, out. My daughter. Oh, get back. Hold on one sec. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Bailey! Hold on. Come on! This is the only problem with live videos is you got friggin' animal attacks. So I started with cigars. And I remember thinking when I saw cigars, you know, that I would love to try a pipe. You know, I remember my uncle used to smoke a pipe. Uh, my grandfather smoked a pipe. And, uh, and when I looked at, when I looked into it originally, I... I remember I was at a cigar shop and they had a pipe in a case and I was like, oh, oh, maybe I'll go get a pipe. You know, do, 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 walk up there, I look, see the price of the thing and it was like $80. I'm thinking, $80 for a pipe? That's like insane. There's no way I'll pay $80 for a pipe. And, you know, when you're 20 years old, you don't got $80 to just drop on stuff like that. So I didn't even bother. To me, it just seemed like, well, shoot. If it's that expensive to smoke a pipe, no wonder no one smokes a pipe anymore. I still smoke cigars, and then, um, I don't know what happened, but one day I was just uh, looking online, and I saw a pipe, and it was like, you know, 40-something bucks, a Savinelli. And I was like, okay, I'm making some decent money now, I'm in my mid-30s, I can drop some money on a pipe, you know, I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? So... That's what I did, and you know, it was rough at first, but I tell you what, once you fall in love with it, uh, you, it's, it's, tough to, it's tough to leave the pipe. Uh, you know, that sounds like a drug addict, but um, it's, it's just, I love smoking a pipe. So why smoke a pipe? Uh, I love everything about it. I love the fact that when you're done smoking it, it stays with you. You put it on your shelf, you put it in your cabinet, you put it wherever you put it. And it's something that brings you enjoyment over and over and over again. You know, it's not like a cigar where you're done smoking the cigar, you put it out, and then you got to go buy another one. You don't got to keep buying a pipe over and over again. You smoke it, and you keep smoking it, and you just keep filling it up. And if you treat them right, and they're good quality, 
they can last you the, your lifetime. That's why a lot of pipes get passed down generation to generation because uh, they can last a very long time. So I like the fact that, uh, that you can use them over and over again. Uh, I like the fact that it's a, it's like an art piece. You know, I mean, this at one point was just a piece of, of wood buried underground and as a root, a big briar root. And, you know, that you could take it and carve it and make different shapes out of it. And, and no two pipes are exactly the same. You know, it's like a fingerprint. They're all different. And even, even pipes that are made out of, you know, machines and factories that have just the same blueprint, they're all different. So I like that. I like the fact that they have character. I like the fact that you can gift pipes to some people or buy pe pipes that belong to other people. They, they have their memories and their characteristics about them. So that's what I like about a pipe. Not, and that just, that's over and above beyond just the fact that I like holding on to, the, you know, just how you can hold a pipe when you, when you smoke it. That's, that sort of covers why uh, I like to smoke a pipe. Um, what made you a pipe smoker? That kind of answered that same question about, uh, you know, I started with cigars and then I always was curious about pipes and I just pulled the trigger. So if you're watching this video and you're like, you know, you're not sure, uh, first of all, I don't encourage people that aren't smokers, hey, go out there and start smoking. Uh, that's not what my channel's about. But if you are a smoker, if you're a cigar smoker and you're, you want to try something new, or it looks like you're a cigarette smoker and you're trying to leave the cigarettes and you want to see if maybe pipes can help you, you know, curb the expensive and, and unhealthy cigarette addiction, uh, try pipes. Uh, I think it's worth, it's worthy of the effort. And it doesn't, believe it or not, back to what I was saying when I was 20 years old and I saw a pipe for uh, 80 bucks. Uh, $80 is actually kind of on the uh, cheap side for a pipe. Um, you can get some really, really good pipes for, for $40. Um, you know, my friend Chris Morgan at MorganPipes.com, uh, he's got some great affordable pipes that you can get for that low. Um, my friends at the Dagners, DagnerPipes.com, they got some really affordable pipes. Um, so you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get pipes. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't, you 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 know don't have to treat yourself every now and then. I mean, I got some pipes that I've spent you know over three hundred dollars for. Um, but uh, if you just want to get into the habit, the habit I call it a habit, but it's really not a habit. This is the first pipe that I've smoked a probably in three weeks or three and a half weeks, and uh, I don't do any other kind of smoking. So, so uh, yeah, it's 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 something that I do to treat myself. Uh, the other question is, uh, what's the worst tobacco you've ever tried? That is easy. Hands down. Worst tobacco I've ever tried. Haunted Bookshop by Cornell and Deal. Now, I have nothing against Cornell and Deal. I am smoking a Cornell and Deal blend right now. Autumn evening. Cornell and Deal. Fantastic aromatic. Haunted Bookshop, did not like it, hated it, worst thing I ever tried. I gave it to my cousin Sarge, he hated it. I don't know if it was the worst thing he ever tried, but he didn't like it, and I think he gave it to somebody, and I think whoever he gave it to, I think they loved it. So, that just goes to show, when people ask me, or ask you, or ask, you know, especially me, uh, you know, what, what tobacco do I recommend? What should you try? Um, someone recommended Haunted Bookshop to me, and I hated it. So I don't like recommending stuff to people because it's, it just all depends on, you know, your own tastes and your own, uh, things like that. So, that was sort of the point of this video. Uh, now I'm going to go through and kind of read some of the messages that you guys have been sending. And that's the beautiful thing when I do these videos. Now when I go, if you see me... Hop on the video, hit that chat button, and as long as I'm filming, uh, we can do some interaction. You know, that's my interaction pose. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. So, New England Pipe Smoker wants to know if I've tried the new corn cob uh, pipe blend from them. And no, I have not. Uh, I looked, and it was uh, sold out on the places that I checked. 
and I just haven't even bothered to try and hunt it down. So I did want to try it, but uh, I don't, uh, I, I, I haven't tried it. Haven't been able to get any yet. Sarah Check wants to, a recommendation for a first pipe. Well, kind of what I was just saying, uh, well, it depends. Very, very, very first pipe, you're not sure if you're going to even like it or not, get a corn cob. It's like 10 bucks, corn cob pipe, they smoke the same, uh, but at least you'll, you'll, you'll learn if you, you know, like, like the hobby or not. Uh, after that, you know, check out, uh, check out morganpipes.com, dagnerpipes.com. If you follow the YouTube pipe community here or on Instagram, uh, there's a lot of, uh, artisan pipe makers that they'll just make pipes like Paul's pipes, you know, uh, Paul is more of a, a, a high-end pipe maker, um, so if you got money to spend, I recommend getting a Paul's Pipes, but, uh, you know, if you wanted, as a first pipe, I would suggest look to spend, you know, corn cobs, cheap. If you want to go higher than a corn cob, look to spend between 40 and, 40 and 80 dollars, maybe. Uh, then the next step up is probably like 100 to 150 range. Uh, I'd say most of my pipes are between the 100 to 150 range. Yep, New England Pipe Smoker recommends a cheap corn cob pipe. So thanks for answering Sarah's question. Um, let's see. Uh, MGVS Squared says uh, he stopped smoking cigars to save money. <laughs> and then he says it was a mistake. That's the thing, though, about pipes is it's much cheaper as far as tobacco-wise uh, than cigars. You know, I remember cigars I'd spend anywhere from... Yeah, ten, ten bucks, eight to, eight to twelve dollars for a, a a cigar. You know, but you smoke it, you toss it out. There goes eight bucks. It's like lighting an eight dollar bill on fire. Uh, if you've never seen an eight dollar bill before, uh, you haven't lived. So uh, yeah, but but pipes you can buy a, a crap ton of tobacco, pipe tobacco, and it'll last you a long time. That's why. That's one of the other things I like about smoking a pipe. <laughs> I just now got to the part. Did I? I didn't mention that. Uh, oh, maybe I didn't mention. But uh, Matches Eight Six Zero was the guy that recommended Haunted Bookshop, and uh, he very, very uh, eloquently uh, just told me in the chat, uh, "Fuck you, Jeff." So uh, thanks. I appreciate that. Jake uh, Bodecker says, "What's your favorite English blend?" I'm not sure if you're asking me, Jake, or if you're asking everybody in the chat. Uh, I prefer now by English blend. Uh, I think of anything that's sort of a non-aromatic, and I always like the Frog Morton stuff. Just been a big fan. I always like Frog Morton. So Frog Morton Cellar is my probably number one favorite. I love Frog Morton on the Bayou, Frog Morton on the Town. Those are all great ones. Quiet. All right. If I'm quiet, I'm just I'm just scrolling through your guys' chats here. Uh, I can't read every single message that I'm getting on here. Um, but my goal is I'm just going to edit a lot of this out. So those of you who aren't watching this live, uh, it'll be a different video than if you watch it live with me. Uh, the Red Mexican says, Happy Sunday. Have a great day. Happy Sunday to you too and everybody else out there. Uh, hey, have you tried Hobbit's Weed? Yes, uh, it's Logan. I have tried Hobbit's Weed. It is very good. I like it. Uh, unfortunately, I think Hobbit Sweet is going away. I think a lot of the uh, tobaccos that came out after 2011, I think, is the year, uh, they're all going bye-bye because our wonderful government and the FDA have made it nearly impossible for uh, tobacco blenders to actually put tobacco on the market now because they've just regulated it and taxed it so much and there's so many hoops you gotta jump through that a lot of these great blends like Hobbit's Weed are just going going away. Uh, NM Blue Sky, do certain pipe styles handle the moisture buildup better than others? Seems like I'm getting a lot of moisture buildup when I smoke. Uh, for me, I've noticed, well, I guess it could depend on the pipes and how they're shaped. You know, this is a reverse calabash. Uh, and the way it really works is this this uh, part right here is a big air chamber and they tend to uh, be a cooler smoke they tend to also uh, not gurgle as much 
Um, so yeah, definitely pipes can change the, the way the pipe smokes, but I mean, that's still not going to change if any moisture builds up in the bowl. Uh, the one key thing is, uh, just how moist is the, toba the tobacco before you put it in. If it's really wet or really, really moist, then you're going to have a higher buildup of moisture. Uh, if uh, some aromatics because of, uh, the casing that they put on there, uh, those will tend to build up more versus a non-aromatic. And like anything, when it comes to pipe smoking, I always have a big proponent of buying all kinds of different blends and trying them out because you're going to find some smoke better than others. You're going to find some don't. And so that's just sort of the fun of the hobby, at least for me. Uh, that's what I enjoy. Uh, New England Pipe Smoker says he gets more gurgling on... Um, bent stem pipes so you know the pipes that the you know stem kind of curves down in uh, where straight pipes for him gurgle less and that's the other thing what you can do uh, what he I don't actually do this when I smoke because I'm so cheap I don't like to waste pipe cleaners which makes absolutely no sense because you know you're gonna spend a hundred dollars on a pipe but you can't waste the two cents on a pipe cleaner but some people while they're smoking if the uh, moisture builds up they'll take a pipe cleaner and just run it through the stem kind of take up the moisture. Uh, what I always do is I always just uh, grab the top of the pipe like this while I'm smoking it if it starts gurgling and then just give it a few good shakes and just shake it out onto the ground and you'll see this big stream of saliva just get ejected out. Uh, so I'll just shake it and then that's usually good to go for a little while. All right, where are we at? Where are we at people? Have I done much reading on the new FDA tobacco regulations, uh, T. Decino wants to know. I have not. Shame on me. Shame on me. I have not. Uh, what I've learned and read has been basically here through the YouTube pipe community. Uh, I know my good buddy Derek Tant. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, Derek Tant. Um, he has done some videos on it as far as you know, keeping people up to date. Many other people have, I just can't name you off the top of my head, um, but from what I have seen, they suck. They suck. Um, it makes no sense, like any typical bureaucracy, government bullcrap, they just put so much, they get their hands in so much stuff and just corrupt it and it just strangles out any sort of positive thing out of it uh, and it just makes me mad. So. Um, from what I remember seeing, a lot of these FDA regulations don't actually take effect until, I think, January. So now would be the time to start buying up as many blends as you want um, before they take effect. What's up, Christopher Cohen? Uh, he says he started smoking a pipe last week because it was getting cold outside. And yes, it has been getting cold. That's one of the reasons why I actually haven't been smoking a pipe. Because here where I live, uh, right now it's actually nice. There's no wind, or you can almost see you can see the reflection in that in that uh, window behind me. That's a tree, and it's not really moving. But normally it gets really windy out here, and it's damn near impossible to smoke a pipe. And I don't have a wind guard, uh, nor do I want to grow icicles off my balls. So I don't smoke outside when it's really cold. What? We did? Mommy got a Christmas tree? Yeah. All right. Think I'm going to stop filming just because we got a Christmas tree? I don't think so. Okay. So, uh, Heroic Ed wants to know how the fishies are. Good question. They are freezing their little fish balls off as well. Uh, before I started this video, I went over there, and uh, the temperature was about 57 degrees. Uh, I gave them some food, uh, but the aquaponics is sort of like in a dormant state right now. One of my next live videos I'm going to do, uh, I will just walk you through the aquaponics live in real time. You can check it out, and then you guys can ask me some questions on it. Uh, what's up, Jason? Jason Setley in chat. Uh, I know he's been watching me for a long time, and uh, I appreciate that. I love, love how some of uh, my subscribers have actually been watching for a long, long time. That really makes, uh, that really warms my balls so the icicles melt. Uh, JD smoking pipes. What's up, man? Good to see ya. He recommends Old Joe Krantz. You know, I've never tried Old Joe Krantz, but uh, I'm sure one of these days I will. Maybe maybe if we ever have a meetup, we'll, uh, you'll bring some and I can try some of that out. 
the let's see, the Wario Man of Doom wants to know if it's possible to smoke your pipe uh, while it's a little windy outside. Yes, it is. Um, you know, here where I live, if it's a little windy, it's fine. Sometimes when it's windy, you know, if you kind of hold your hand around the bowl and just protect it as much as you can, uh, that actually does a lot. Uh, well, it does two things. It keeps the wind out and it warms your little uh, hands. So, uh, you know, when it's windy or cold, uh, this is a good way to do it. Uh, you can't, you don't, you don't want to cut off all the wind, all the air, or else uh, your pipe will go out. Um, but you don't want too much wind to come in because that'll obviously uh, not be good either. But uh, what I was saying is they make, I don't think it'll work on this pipe because you can see uh, how Paul made it. Uh, it's not flat on the top. But uh, they have wind guards for pipes that are supposedly work really, really well. Um, that you could just put on top of the, on top of the pipe and, uh, and it actually blocks the wind from uh, blowing on it. It's a uh, non-pipe chat. Is that a, a Spigen case? Love Spigen. Uh, oh, this is, yes it is. First I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, who asked me that? That was MG uh, V squared. Uh, but yeah, this is a great iPhone case. I've uh, dropped it a few times and it has, it has withstood the test. So uh, I've been very pleased with it. Uh, let's see. R. Drews wants to know uh, if I'm familiar with pipe packs that Bork and Riff is selling. I am not. Uh, contrary to popular belief, I am not uh, the be-all, end-all of pipes or pipe tobacco. Um, I actually surprise myself how little I know sometimes. So, uh, no, I haven't tried pipe packs from Bork and Riff. I think I have some Bork and Riff tobacco somewhere, but uh, I haven't gotten around to smoking it. Marco Panzoni uh, says, hi from Italy. Hello from California. How are you? Uh, Aristopolis says, where's Bailey at while you're on the red carpet? Bailey. All right. I think we're back on. Um, this is just going to be, this is going to be real quick. Uh, so I apologize to you guys. This whole live format is completely different for me. As you can see, there's some bugs. I can't tell when the video goes off. So I'll be sitting here talking, answering questions, just spewing nuggets of knowledge. Just wonderful, wonderful nuggets that are coming up here from my brain. And I'll just be talking, and then I look at the chat to see, like, the next question, and then I see people saying the video's down. And then I look out here, right here on my video, and it still says I'm just... Going off live, just happily, you know, just talking away. Doesn't show me any problems, no error messages. So uh, I have no way of knowing that uh, it's not working. So, um, yeah. So I apologize for that, uh, but, but this is all a work in progress. And, uh, you know, I was hoping maybe it wouldn't go off because uh, I'm using a different camera than I did before. But anyway, um... I think I kind of answered all the stuff I was going through on here. Uh, I, again, this is going to be something I'm going to try new. I'm going to try uh, filming it live, saying what I want to say on my videos. You know, I'm going to have a point going into these videos. When I'm done speaking my point, I'll look at the chat. I'll try and answer some, uh, you know, messages. If you guys see the video go off, just do what you did. Say it in the chat. Hey, man, the video stopped working, and then you, hopefully I'll notice it, and I'll stop it, and maybe start it up again, and we'll just see what happens. So uh, that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching, for uh, chatting away with me, and uh, hold on one sec. Hey! Stop digging! Bailey, stop it! All right. I'm going to go spank this little hairy bastard. Uh, talking about the dog, not... Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, we'll talk to you later, and uh, again, thanks for bearing with this whole new format that I'm trying. Uh, I really like it. I like interacting with you guys. Hopefully you like it too, and uh, we'll talk to you later.